And all right, YouTube, what is going on, guys? How are you all doing? Welcome back to another video on the David Hammond Visuals YouTube channel. Now, first and foremost, guys, my voice is shot. I know I've picked up a cold the past couple days, unfortunately. It's midwinter here, but mid-December, and uh, just, yeah, it has not been super fun. But nonetheless, I want to keep up with the uh, video schedule. So I decided, you know, regardless of the voice, let's continue to make videos. So with that said, guys, you read the title. I actually have no clue what I titled it, but it's something along the lines of me utilizing the same gear, same location, same setup, but achieving a completely different result, okay? So there's a bit of context to fill in the gaps. Just yesterday or a few days ago, I was editing a video and I came across a video of me utilizing the same gear, same microphone, same room. I was making a, a photo video tutorial, maybe like eight months ago, and it just looked and sounded way different despite me literally nothing changing like the window didn't change my room didn't change the mic the camera like everything was the exact same but you know fast forward eight months now now i've just made a few small tweaks that took literally just a few seconds and the overall result has changed massively so i'm making this video to you guys uh, as photographers or videographers on how to really just maximize and optimize the gear you have to make it look and or sound as professional as it possibly can and not to use the cop out of like oh i don't have a, a this or this or this so i can't make it look good no it just comes down to your eye and your creative skill so as always guys in this video i'm going to break it down into three main sections that is going to be number one lighting number two audio and then number three camera slash composition so with that said let's Let's jump into the first section, lighting. All right, guys. So in that first video, as I overlay clips about eight months ago or so, the main difference was lighting. With lighting was there, my camera was positioned literally right here. So right in front of me, and that emitted a front light. Okay, now I've made tons of videos on this, uh, guys, of, of lighting. And I'm sure some of you are sick of this at this point because I've said it so many times. So front lighting. Now, front lighting, guys, it can be all right. It's usually a little bit more boring. It's uh, it's nothing too crazy. And if you're trying to go for a more dramatic or cinematic look, then usually you usually want to stay away from front lighting. Again, it's not always a bad thing, but it, at least in that tutorial, maybe it wasn't ideal because it was a photo slash video tutorial. So it definitely wasn't the most cinematic. Where now guys with this camera, you know, fast forward eight months later, instead of the camera being directly, directly in front of me, giving off that front light, it is now beside me. Well, it's in front of me, but it's beside the window. It's parallel with the window for the most part, which is now giving off or emitting a much more split lighting, okay? You can see my face is much brighter here and it is much darker here. This is also known as Rembrandt lighting, as you guys know. It is a very cinematic style of light. It is done in almost probably like every Hollywood movie you could think of. Split lighting or Rembrandt lighting is just, it's, it's a classic, like it's just something that's always been done, it always will be done, because it just looks good and it's very easy to do. So that is number one, guys. If you have a camera, regardless of you know what camera it is, you can always decide and choose where you position your camera. So maybe instead of you, instead of you just having it right here in front of the window, again, like I say, put it beside, create more of a split lighting. It's completely free and it takes two seconds to do. So that's the first thing that I did. Number two, let's now speak of audio. So back around six, eight months ago when I was filming those videos, if I'm gonna place them right here so you can hear the audio. Now, again, I know my voice is bad here, but just try to listen to the acoustics and everything, okay? Play it right now. All right, YouTube, what is going on, guys? David Hammond. Now, before we begin, if you hear a shower running, brother's taking a shower, but we're gonna get to this video. So guys, this is the first of three, four, five episodes of bettering yourself as a photographer and a videographer. Now, it's a bit of a disclaimer, guys. Now, if you guys could hear that, the acoustics hadn't changed and the acoustics meaning the dynamics of the room so my room has stayed the exact same i don't have you know i don't have sound panels now or you know it's it's not any better it's my room still the acoustics are not great it's very echoey but the main difference and why this sounds a lot better than that did that sounding much more echoey and reverby and just not the best is simply because of where I've positioned the mic. Okay, so beforehand, I kept the mic right on top of the camera. And now usually that's okay, you know, it's not a big deal, but the thing was is that it was just too far away. And because the room, the acoustics in my room were not great, it really exacerbated that and, and it really revealed how, uh, how the audio just was not optimal, okay? Most times you guys will be okay if you keep it on your camera, especially if you're, the acoustics in your room are better. You know, it's a much more cushiony room, like a family room where the audio is gonna be absorbed into everything opposed to just bouncing off walls. But that being said, 
now that I had that in mind, fast forward about six to eight months later, I knew that I wanted to have the mic much closer to my face. And because of that, I uh, had to get resourceful. So what I now do, as you guys know, is I have a boom pole, right? You can't see it, but I have a boom pole and the mic is literally right here. It's literally, I'm, I'm touching it. It's right there in front of me, okay? It's the exact same mic, but instead of it being way on my camera, maybe like at least four or five feet away, it is now a foot, half a foot away. Again, this is something we can all do excuse me, regardless of the mic we have, you know, this boom pole is an Amazon basics boom pole. It was like 30 bucks, tw tw not even, I think it was like 25 bucks. Okay. Um, and yeah, guys, again, we can all decide where we position our, our mic. You don't even need to buy a boom pole. Just maybe what you can do is have your mic, get an extension cord, plug it into your camera and have your mic maybe resting down here or have a little cheap tripod and just put it down there. Like, you know, you can get creative and I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys how to do this, but just being aware of, you know, where to position your mic. And all right, guys, let's finish off this video with number three. This is camera slash composition. Okay, guys, now this is pretty big, but also still, you know, fairly subtle. The main things with camera composition is around six to eight months ago when I filmed the camera over here, uh, the main thing was the lens choice I used, okay? And, and I really, it's because I didn't understand this too much back then. Um, with lenses, okay, camera lenses, there are two main components with every single lens. And this is going to be distortion and compression, okay? The most important one being distortion in this case. And what that is, distortion is the amount that a lens will distort the image or bow the image based on how wide the lens is. The wider the angle is, the more distortion there's gonna be. What it does is distortion is it sucks in all the sides of the lens to really just fit everything it can. It almost looks like a fisheye or like a GoPro, okay? It's not a very pleasing look. Now, beforehand, I used a 10 to 18 millimeter lens, okay? This is a 24. Back then I used to, it was probably, I probably kept it on around 14, maybe 12. Because of that, because it was such a wider lens, all right, there was a lot more distortion in the shot. And what that does is it makes you, the like the middle of the lens looks very, almost puffy and very like big, where the sides look very, very small and weird. I'm actually gonna put the wide angle lens on right now because I wanna show you guys exactly what I mean. So let's do that now. All right, guys, this is the wide angle lens. This is what I kept it on. And this isn't even the widest it goes, okay? So this is the widest. <laughs> All right, but I recorded those videos, I believe at around 12 to 14 mil. So around like this. So right here is around 13 mils. This is around how I recorded it right there, maybe 14, but it wasn't a big difference. And if you guys can see, okay, like look like, I'm not saying this is a bad shot. Some people love wide angle lens looks, but like it's very different, okay? There's gonna be a lot of distortion. Everything kind of looks like it's bowing. And like, if you notice, look how big my hands look and look how tiny my head looks. Where if I put my head to the side, look how fat it'll look. I don't know if, you, I, I can't see myself, but. It looks like really fat and then it looks really tiny. You see that, how crazy that is? That's what distortion is. It just bows and distorts everything and things in the corners. Like, look how big my hands look compared to my face, okay? This is what it does, the corners, which is usually for the most part, not a very flattering look, especially when you're going for a much more cinematic style clip. Like in Hollywood movies, it's gonna be very rare that you're gonna, they're gonna record a talking clip with a wide angle lens. It just doesn't make sense. Usually you're gonna go for a much closer to a 50 millimeter look because again, that is equivalent to what our eye sees. Anyways, that being said, let's go back to the normal lens, go. All right, so we're back with the 24 mil lens. Now, the reason I had to have the wide angle lens instead of the 24 was because having the wide angle lens allowed me to get much closer to the camera. And the reason I had to be close was because I had the shotgun mic on top of the camera. Now that I have the boom pole and the, and the mic's right on top of me here, it allows me to have you know, a variety of lenses. I can put on the 24 lens, I can put on the 50 mil lens, I can put on lenses that naturally have a more appealing look without worrying about, you know, oh, I'm too far away from the camera because the, the mic's on there. Well, the mic's here, and this is why so many times in Hollywood movies or, or commercials or things like that, they'll usually go for a setup like this. They'll keep a lens that's much punchier and tighter, and then they'll have maybe a boom guy, you'll see him hold the mic, um, so they don't have to keep the mic on the camera. Does that make sense? Because usually it's gonna be way too far. 
And guys, to finish it off, we spoke of camera. Now composition, super simple. Um, the composition in this shot is obviously just much nicer. You know, it's, it's super simple, it's nothing crazy, but I have a bit more depth and symmetry. I have my desk and then I have the film camera, some cameras there and a gimbal there. This is adding some symmetry and depth like I explained beforehand, which took literally two seconds to set up. You guys can all do this in your rooms. Like, you know, my dresser was there the whole time just when I was filming here, it was just shooting the back of my room. Now. Is that ugly? Do you, should you guys shoot the back of your room like that? It's not ugly, but it was just kind of boring. Like nothing really stood out about it. You know what I mean? Where me now positioning my camera here, taking two seconds, putting literally two things bop bop. It just, you know, it creates much, uh, the composition just looks much nicer. So guys, that is it. I'm going to finish it there. I hope this video was of resource and helpful to you guys. I really just wanted to make this to show you that you don't need the craziest gear. It, it, it's really just more so knowing how to maximize and use the gear you have to the best of your ability. Okay. Which is something we can all do regardless if you have an iPhone or a red camera. Okay. So that's why I make these videos. So that's it guys. And I will finish it here guys with the plug. There is a free photo video course for each and every one of you guys okay it's a free half an hour course that i've put together which takes one section out of my six mega courses okay these six mega courses are each about an hour and a half long that's the commercial course the documentary course the short film course the music video course the outdoor photography course and the outdoor videography course again i'm taking one section and put it into a free half an hour course for each one of you guys so if that sounds good first link down below and if you guys would like to purchase a full course after that then awesome if not at least you have the free half an hour course completely free for you guys. And finally, guys, there now is one-on-one -on -one photo and video coaching. So if you guys really want to take it to that next step and really improve your skills as a photographer or videographer, then I'd strongly recommend you check out the coaching down below again on the website, David Hammond Visuals. So that's it, guys. Thank you all so much. Hope this helped. And with that, hopefully my voice is better next video. I'll see you guys then. Much love. Peace.